Welcome to the magazine segment and today we are looking at construction and housing that's tightening parameters to ensure safe housing. And we know following the recent uh, rise in rogue contractors building buildings collapsing, the immediate impact of injury, destruction and death takes precedence in the news bulletins but little is said after uh, the contractors who were behind the scenes and slip away from the public eye. Who is watching? And what can be done about this? To discuss more on the matters uh, construction and housing is the Managing Director of Marfin Engineering and Construction Limited, Hamilton Mwanyalo. Welcome, sir. Thank you, Joy. Okay. Thanks. Uh, Mr. Mwanyalo, just to start us off, share with us your background uh, in, as an expert in the construction field. Uh, I've been in the construction industry uh, for the last 20 years. I'm a trained civil engineer mm -hmm. uh, and thus I've been worked with uh, organi a few organizations, uh, structural companies, uh, civil engineering companies and building construction mm -hmm. companies. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been well versed to, uh, to, to know exactly uh, most of the f in the field and uh, in, the, in the same field uh, I've been uh, working then I came out on my own. Uh, the last 10 years I've been running Muffin Engineering and Construction and uh, we are we're well versed uh, with the construction uh, industry. All right, so you've yes. been in the field for long enough. We've been uh, <laughs> now independently, yes. been, um, out of the, uh, been, been employed, yes. now we've been out for the last 10 years. All right. Yes. Okay, and now in, in your view, uh, yes. who do you think is sleeping on the job with all these stories and reports of collapsed buildings? And they're supposed to be a planning, you know, department in the counties. What is, who is sleeping on the job? I, I want to say this. Uh, we know we have the architects who actually are the ones who start the project, who are the ones who draw the, the drawings. Mm. Then they're taken to the authorities for approvals. This is uh, the councils or the local authorities. Yeah. The local authorities, they are supposed to follow up the works. I mean, as they've been done, the construction has been done. But I think one of the big problems we have is our local, uh, local, local uh, industry, local uh, authorities, authorities uh -huh. are not really doing their work. They don't make follow-ups. They don't, look, you know, there are stages when you, when such a job is done at a certain stage, it's supposed to be inspected. So first, I want to say the local the local authorities are to blame. That's one. Mm -hmm. Two, the people who give the jobs to court, they don't give. Some people want cheap things. So in the sense, they don't give jobs to the right people. The professionals. The right, they give to the quacks, or they give to the fully, people who call fully. These are people who don't have knowledge. They don't, they're told what to do. Now, when you tell them they supervise, they, they work on their, their own, they cannot. So literally all the, the fully do, they do some shoddy work, and they, I mean, they do the slab, uh, they do the concrete, mm -hmm. and they want to be paid. They, so these two people, you know, the, the people who actually give the jobs to the people who don't know what they are doing, then if you, give, if you don't do that, they give the right people, the local authorities don't follow because some of the contractors also want quick money. So that's the third people. I mean, there's some contractors also don't follow the law. So actually you realize also contractors contribute because sometimes you're told use, say, Y10 or Y8. Someone decided to use a lower or a thin uh, whatever, I mean, a, a thin uh, twisted bar. And, you know, it can't carry the load. It can't carry those loads. So actually what happens is uh, the building does, doesn't stay long. I mean, it starts cracking. As you add more weight, as you add more weight on top, mm -hmm. you realize within time, again, it starts to, 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 to bear the, the loads and then it has to come down. This, this is a, a, a huge scenario here of uh, cheap is expensive. Correct. I mean, cutting corners and uh, the price that you pay eventually. True. All the insurance and all that. Until you are into it. Uh, okay, anybody, anybody in his own thinking thinks cheap is saving. Mm. Until you are into it. When you enter into it, then you realize it's not that way. I mean, the, the, the more you want to save, the more costly it becomes. Uh, because the losses you make when the building comes down, or the losses you make when you realize you're almost finishing the building and it starts to crack. I mean, it's, it's, you know, you feel sometimes it's you can even walk on it and you feel it's plain, you know. So literally, cheap is expensive. 
Yeah. But I, 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 I want to say uh, it's good to follow the law. Mm -hmm. The contractors need to do the right thing, use the right materials. Uh, also, the local regulator, we have to blame them because sometimes they turn a blind eye on this. And it ends up uh, becoming, uh, bringing up all these issues we see every day in the newspaper and uh, in the TVs. Yes. Yes. And, and you've just mentioned that. I mean, the construction disasters that have happened over the years. 2011, according to the architecture, Kenya is indicated to lose 1.4 billion from collapsed buildings. And in several cases in 2010, we had 20, uh, 2011, you know, cases in June and July, collapsed buildings in Nairobi. September, there was Vihiga where 10 people were trapped, True. not to True. mention 2012, True. True. just the other day. You know, who is to blame? You've, you've talked about the local authorities for n not following up and, uh, and of course, uh, the contractors. How can we rectify this? Uh, thank you. That, uh, actually, we are actually at the turn of all these events because as I'm talking to you now, uh, yesterday, there was a big launch of a National Construction Authority. Mm -hmm. This is a regulatory body. Um, this body came as a result of uh, lobbying amongst the contractors, uh, contractors who are really professionals in this field. They came up together through a body called Kenya Federation of Master Builders. So through Federation of Master Builders, we have been uh, somehow looking, chasing the government or pushing the government to, to, to start up a body which can regulate the contractors mm -hmm. uh, all over the country, I mean in Kenya. Because actually you realize it's only in Kenya where we don't have a regulatory body. Mm -hmm. If you go to many other countries, even in our neighbors, Tanzania, uh, there's a regulatory body which actually uh, everything is being followed up in terms of uh, the contractor which contract has been awarded this. You don't give a job to just uh, anybody. I mean, somebody who tells you can build, you don't have his background, you don't have the history of the company. And uh, so the National Construction Authority will now, from now on, will actually be able to regulate, will be able to actually vet the contractors, will be able to follow up on the contractors, the raw contractors who are not doing quality work, who are, I mean, delaying projects, you know, all these things. I mean, this is a body that's going to work for the, for the all, actually for the public, for the government. It's just a regulator for all the, the everything, uh, all construction works in Kenya. Right. Going forward, yes, the National Construction Authority, the regulator, is going to ensure that there are no quacks and quacks are removed out of the way. But what I'm wondering is, it's not too, it's not too long ago that we started seeing buildings collapsing. Yet, whereas before, before that, there was no talk of collapsed buildings. What changed? Uh, yes, actually, if you realize, even the buildings which were built like many years ago, like I mean, the, the, uh, just after after independence, mm -hmm. up to around 1980s, the houses uh, were actually uh, very strong. Uh, I mean, what I want to say is, the contractor then used to follow the procedures. 100%. Was there a regulator then? There was a regulator until 1988. The regulator was there until 1988. Um, that's when, uh, I think, I don't know what happened, then the body uh, ceased to be into operation. Mm -hmm. But until 1988, the, uh, the regulatory body was there. So after it ceased uh, being in operation, I think that's the time everybody is free for all. Everybody started doing whatever he thinks is right. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody said he's a contractor. Even now, you realize the, there are very many contractors who are not trained. Even today in the industry, mm -hmm. you go to road construction, you go to the building construction. I would say almost half of them, almost, 